Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of our 30 day biology study challenge. Today we're on day 17. We're gonna be talking about the environments, effects on genes and chromosomes. We're gonna be doing a content review and then some practice questions. So make sure you stay tuned the whole time. Let's get started. Genes can be influenced by the environment. For example, in identical twin studies, we can see that identical twins separated at birth can have different heights and weights after 20 years. Most likely the cause of these differences is that each twin was provided a different diet and had different physical activities throughout their lifetimes because an environment does play a role in influencing individuals. So let's look at a karyotype. Now remember, a karyotype is just an image of all the chromosomes in the nucleus of an organism's any one cell. So in humans, we have 46 total chromosomes or 23 pairs. So remember that the first 22 pairs, these are called autosomes and the two that are left these are our sex chromosomes. If you're biologically female, you have two X sex chromosomes. If you're biologically male, your sex chromosomes are X and Y. Now we do see some differences in certain genetic disorders where we can have different combinations of these, but we'll get into that when we start talking about genetic differences. So how do we get a karyotype of a baby that's not born yet? Well, we can use something called amniocentesis. Amniocentesis, or an amniotic fluid test, is a medical procedure used in prenatal diagnosis of genetic disorders and fetal abnormalities. So what happens is a small amount of amniotic fluid, which is here, is going to contain some fetal tissues, and it's going to be extracted from the amniotic sac with a large needle, and once we take it out, the DNA can be examined for genetic abnormalities, or we can simply see the biological sex of the individual. Now, not all women choose to do this because there is a small risk involved in the procedure of amniocentesis, but if you elect to do it, or if you're a high-risk pregnancy, some women will be able to see a karyotype of their child before they're born. Now, remember, a normal human karyotype has 23 pairs of chromosomes, including the sex chromosomes here. This individual has all 23 pairs, one X and one Y. If you look closely, you can see this individual is a biological male. So when we look at our karyotype, we're going to identify and evaluate the size and the shape and the number of chromosomes in our sample body of cells. Some problems that we could see would be duplicates of chromosomes where there shouldn't be, or deletions of certain arms of chromosomes, or translocations of chromosomes. One difference we could see right away is if there was a third chromosome at the 21st position. Now all the chromosomes aren't arranged like this. Scientists have to make sure that they are arranged after the picture is taken into the correct order for the correct chromosomes. But once they are arranged, we can look and determine if there's any genetic abnormalities. For example, at the 21st location, if there's a third chromosome, we would have what's called trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome. Trisomy just means three copies of a chromosome. Now, chromosomes aren't everything and genes aren't everything. The environment has a huge influence on phenotype or on the resulting traits of an individual. Some scientists estimate up to 75% of who you are and how your traits operate is due to environmental factors. We're learning so much more about epigenetics and how different things can turn genes on and off in different ways. So environmental factors can influence gene expression and lead to phenotypic plasticity. This is when individuals with the same genotype have differences in the phenotype that they express because of environmental conditions. For example, there's some mammals like rabbits that can exhibit different fur colors and different temperatures. Hydrangeas are another popular example of this. The petals of certain hydrangeas can change color depending on the pH of the soil that they're planted in. So for example here we see that blue flowers are going to appear when the soil is highly acidic and pink flowers are going to appear when there's a neutral or slightly acidic soil. Many reptiles such as crocodiles and turtles have sex determination based on temperature because sex determination in these animals is highly dependent on hormones and these hormones can be changed by the activity levels of different enzymes depending on a specific temperature. So we can see an entire brood of turtles hatching to be one sex because they were all incubated at a particular temperature. We know that some genetic differences in individuals are due to single allele or single gene changes and others are due to changes in entire chromosomes. A lot of times this happens because of non-disjunction or when a chromosome doesn't separate properly during meiosis. A lot of genetic disorders we call autosomal because they're occurring on any chromosome that's not a sex chromosome. So all the chromosomes except for sex chromosomes, remember, are autosomes. And so autosomal conditions are caused by mutations on chromosomes that are not sex chromosomes. 
You might have heard of Huntington's disease as an example of an autosomal condition or an autosomal dominant genetic disorder, which often doesn't appear until later in life. So people can pass it on to their offspring without even knowing that they have it. And then there's lots of autosomal recessive disorders like Tay-Sachs disease, cystic fibrosis, PKU, sickle cell anemia. Chromosomal conditions are usually caused by non-disjunction, which means when those chromosomes are supposed to separate, especially during anaphase two of meiosis, we're getting an extra chromosome ending up in the sex cell. So things like trisomy 21, Turner syndrome, Kleinfelters, Polyx, uh, Jacob or Jacob syndrome, these are all examples of chromosomal conditions. So let's jump into a few practice questions. Starting here, two identical flowering plants of the same species are planted at separate locations in a garden. Plant A produces green flowers and plant B produces pink flowers. When the soil is tested, the pH near plant A is found to be more acidic than the pH of the soil near plant B. What is a likely explanation for the difference? Think about it and you can pause and go ahead and mute me if you want and go through these questions at your own pace. Remember, do what is best for you and your learning process. Correct answer is C, the soil pH influences phenotypic expression. It's not changing the genotype, it's changing the expression of the phenotype. Two, genes are inherited, but their expressions can be modified by the environment. This statement best explains why a, some animals have dark fur only when the temperature is within a certain range. B, identical twins who grow up in different homes have the same characteristics. C, offspring produced by means of sexual reproduction look exactly like their parents. Or D, animals can be cloned, but plants cannot. Correct answer is A, some animals have dark fur only when the temperature is within a certain range. Again, that's the environment influencing the expression of those genes. Seedless watermelon have triploid cells. This makes it difficult for the plant to successfully produce seeds. Why? A, triploid cells hinder even chromosome pairing in meiosis. B, triploid cells cannot proceed through the S phase of mitosis. C, triploid cells increase chromosome stability in meiosis. Or D, triploid cells have fewer chromosomes than diploid cells. Think about it. Correct answer is A, triploid cells hinder even chromosome pairing in meiosis. This graph shows the effects of temperature on sex ratios of the T. scripta, the pond slider turtle. If eggs are incubated below 28 degrees, what will be the result in the brood of turtles? So we have a graph here. I'm gonna take my video off so you guys can see this a little bit better. And let's go through the answers. A, all the turtles will be male. B, all the turtles will be female. C, 30% of the turtles will be male. Or D, none of the turtles will survive. Think about it. Correct answer is A, all the turtles will be male. So we can see from the graph that at 28 degrees or below, we have 100% male turtles coming up from this environmental condition. But temperature will have an effect on the expression of some of those genes and the resulting hormones to determine the sex of the different turtles. All right, everyone, thanks so much for sticking with us today. Tomorrow is day 18. We're gonna be talking about DNA and RNA, our nucleic acids. Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any days of our 30-day biology study challenge. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful, and I'll see you later.